Welcome back to Recalibre Agency. I'm joined today by Paul Murphy, the principal at 3 Advance. And today we're going to be talking about some of the lessons that he's learned in reinventing his agency as technologies change and some of the principles that you should be applying to yours as well. So Paul, thank you for joining us today. And will you tell us a little bit about your agency, where you started, where you've been and where you're going? Sounds good, Danielle, it's lovely to see you. Um, so 3 Advance is based in DC. We're a 20 person dev agency that focuses on startups, uh, new product development for mostly startups, greenfield startups going from zero to one. And also we work with some large nonprofits building out new platforms and apps. The last time you and I chatted, we really dug into the fact that it's so easy to become commoditized when you're offering marketing services and development right. services and that you have to avoid that like the plague uh, if you want yeah. to stay in business and to really thrive. What's some uh, tactics and strategies and words of wisdom that you can share with others in how you've approached yeah. that whole concept? I, I think you've got to be curious and you've got to be really passionate about the technology itself. Um, it's so easy and I don't think there's anything wrong with this. A lot of agencies, you know, know what they do, they do it very well and they optimize exactly what they're doing. I think for us, like we really enjoy new product development and we really enjoy using new technology, reading up on, on new tech. And I think that kind of curiosity drives us to enjoy our work more and I think without that curiosity and passion in the, you know, in the, at the executive level, I think it's going to be difficult to do this. There needs to be really a passion behind because it's not just, it's not just about making money. It's about, you know, it's about evenings, weekends, um, you know, playing around with a VR headset or, you know, jumping on TikTok the day it arrived, you know, things like this that are not, you know, built into your job spec or something that you're going to spend hours, obviously unpaid during the day trying to figure out. So it really starts with someone on the team really being interested to do the work outside of work. Um, and then, uh, you know, that will open up the opportunities that, you know, could be discussed. And, you know, I think, you know, I'll give you another example of something we changed, I think around four or five years ago, you know, we used to work, we're a dev shop. So we used to be a .NET de development shop, which was my personal background. And um, quite frankly, we kept really struggling and really being frustrated with the technology and the tools that, being used, that were being used. Um, Azure is like the cloud platform for Microsoft products. And when it arrived, there were so many issues with it as it arrived. And the frustration grew so much that we, were, we got frustrated with Microsoft. We got frustrated with .NET. Um, you know, the grass was greener when we saw this other technology like Node and AWS pop up. And that sort of spurned the interest in learning a bit more. And really then at one point, it was like, I think four or five years ago, we decided it was just, it was time to do it. One of our projects, you know, we had some JavaScript experience in-house and we decided to just go all in on Node. And that's a big change for a .NET shop to do that. And it's, it's, it's kind of scary from a business perspective, but the frustrations and the, you know, the lack of the options that we wanted within the environment we were using pushed us to do it. And with one project came another potential pro project. And I think, you know, working as an agency, I think one of the most, you know, one of the, the biggest benefits of an agency, right, is that we work on different client projects all the time. We have a chance to start a new and do something different and do something better all the time. So for us, it was a huge, huge shift um, but it was, it was worth it because we got to see it through and we got to see the difference and compare this new tech with something we did before and gradually move project by project over to this new tech. And right now, I think we have one large .NET project we still have, but it's, you know, it's been sort of sitting around, not being used for a long time. We jump in to fix things, but aside from that, you know, we've migrated fully and we've offloaded some of those projects that were not possible to change technology. It's it's exciting. Like we were much happier being where we are right now. And it's a ex more exciting place to be than say where we were looked down upon by the other developers working on .NET, which was the least cool uh, tech to work on. So we skipped the Ruby on Rails and jumped straight over JavaScript and Node to serverless on AWS, which is a service-based JavaScript. And it's been, it's been a great process. And again, hiring people, it's much more easy to bring people into to new tech and interesting things and that's been, that's sort of like part of our, our hiring strategy as well. Like, and we talked about, you mentioned web three and blockchain for us right now to try and bring on new talent. Um, you know, we're competing with some of the you know biggest, uh, biggest companies around in DC. That's where we're located in Washington, DC. We've got Amazon and Capital One and these firms that are paying huge amounts of money to developers and, and other people joining their teams. Um, well, we have something to offer as well because, you know, we're doing blockchain. We're taking chances on new, on new blockchains. We're recently using Flow. We've done some work on Ethereum. Um, you know, it's, it's another asset, I think, to offer our, our developers as well as, as well as business. So, um, you know, that's an exciting, it's an exciting thing to work on as a developer if you're, if you're using these new tech. And again, it helps us be more competitive in the hiring space as well as on the business development side. And when you're changing your service mix, when you're using it as part of your hiring strategy and giving 
existing team members the opportunities to learn about what they're passionate about, what they're right already researching on the weekends and, you know, the, the random things that they're just really curious about. And then they get to implement in their day-to-day -day work as well. You're creating this culture, this environment that's constantly on the pursuit of greater things, as opposed to just trying to maintain what's already there, which is really cool. Absolutely. And it's sort of, it shines through every day. I was having a talk with my co-founder just the other day, just today, actually, about he was away on vacation for a week and he had popped into Slack and we have a Web3 channel just dedicated to Web3. And, you know, a few years ago, we would have posted stuff on, on, on Slack and it was sort of slow for the rest of the team to post and share things like this. Uh, the, our channels are lit up every day with new articles, new news. And um, that sort of like points towards one of the initiatives that we've done for the last, uh, I think just over a year, we've been doing a newsletter called What's Happening. And it's the entire team now that's feeding in content into this newsletter. The newsletter is about, it's, it's news and apps, but it's also news and startups, technology, and Web3. We have a section called What's Dappening, which is a, a decentralized app, but Dapp is a decentralized app. But it's really cool to see the entire team, um, you know, throwing in news articles, um, you know, it could be to do with a, like there's a huge merge happening with Ethereum, a huge movement in in how Ethereum actually works, and that's something that we've been talking about. But it's really cool for both for culture and to feed this marketing newsletter machine that we've got going right now. It's been a it's 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 awesome. I don't think it's it's harder to do that when we're not you know playing with fun toys, and uh, I think that's where it starts. And when you have your whole team engaged in marketing for your agency as well, there is so much right more on. progress that can be made. And the excitement, the passion that they share for different topics excites clients as well. So it's just this beautiful up-leveling kind of situation. Right. And um, so did you have any challenges as you have iterated your service mix in uh, bringing the team along and getting their skill sets aligned with the new services that you were offering? Yeah, good question. Um, again, another huge benefit of an agency, right, is that we are often learning with other people's money. And I don't mean to say that we're, you know, that we're stuck doing things that are just for the sake of it, but we're, we get an opportunity to learn on the job, and especially with Web3 and blockchain. Like the reality is we're opening, we're opening engagement with clients that we're very open about that this hasn't been built before. Even the tech we're using on a large project that we've been working on for the last nine months, the tool sets weren't available when we started this project. And going into this, we knew that this was a, this was a whole new space, but giving getting trust from from a client and from working with them before and them understanding you know our our ethos and 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 our trustworthiness and our dedication to the same cause that they have you know they've given us a space to actually learn this thing, and it's um so like that that's a huge benefit as I say of an agency because you can spend that time you know doing R and D and being funded for it rather than take nine months on a pet project which would be very expensive and you know, not your core focus and, and, and not as likely to be successful. And, and then I think for, you know, for team members, then it's like, you know, our hiring over the last six months, definitely certainly this year is based around like, you know, aptitude and attitude are the two things that are so most important when we hire. Aptitude and experience are really, really important. But if team members are not coming in with this attitude of wanting to learn and be part of a team and want to learn from other people, and, uh, you know, it's always a great sign for us when de developers and product people are telling us about something they've read lately or, or, or they've done a new certification and something completely different than what they work on day to day. It's, it speaks a lot to their kind of character and what they're, how they will fit into the team. So that's a huge part of our hiring strategy is looking for those kind of tenants within an individual's personality. If they're interested in learning, if education is a key component of their, of their existence, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work really well with us. So when you're dealing with change in your agency, especially since you have a team of developers, they're creatives, they're craftsmen, they're very proud of their work and what they do um, and create. Right. How do you create a positive environment where there's stability amidst constant change? I think if, so long as people are kept busy, they're not worried about, you know, new sales. Or they, they don't really think about that, that, that situation. Now, we always want to make sure that we're reminding people that there's a business at the end of this. It's not just, you know, you're showing up to do something and, you know, it's, 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 it's static and stable forever. You know, people have got to do their jobs very well and it's got to, it's got to keep happening that way. From the sales side of things, I'll say, if, if we keep our developers hungry, um, we're adding the correct team members. They see the new people coming on that are as good, better sometimes. And 
you know, the, the, of the right frame of mind and that they see that whoever's leaving the company, because people leave, whether it's, whether it's their decision, whether it's our decision, whether it's a mix of decisions, they need to see it and believe that any of the decisions or any of the things that are happening are making us stronger and not, and not affecting us long-term. And, you know, there has been, you know, especially in the wake of the pandemic the last few years, like we, like a lot of other groups, we shifted from being mostly central and have an office and everyone in, or say most people in person to all remote. And, you know, we had a culture shakeup that we had to deal with. And, you know, ultimately we were a hybrid company because some of our people were remote and then suddenly we're fully remote. We thought everything was perfect, but then it wasn't perfect, you know? And I think right now, after going through that, again, as agency owners, we go, we go through the highs and lows and look back and go, well, at least I learned from that and that won't happen again. It's partly why we're here. Um, but going through some of those lessons that we've taken in the past has affected what we do right now. And that's making sure that, um, you know, everyone's connected, that we're meeting regularly, that small teams are looking after each other, that managers are checking in with their people, that, um, you know, there is opportunity not just to report on your work being done, but there's opportunities to talk about new things. There's opportunities to show off your work. There's opportunities to ask for help. Um, and then of course, getting people together. Yeah, we have a huge retreat plan for next month in New Orleans, which uh, we're bringing team members from as far away as we have a developer in Nepal, we have a developer in Costa Rica, a few people in Europe and um, be you know, so being fun. able to offer that. It's, it's awesome. But being able to offer that, I think, you know, especially having no office anymore, not having that draw and a place to go to, you know, we need to make a big deal out of this. And especially if we're not going through a period of two years without hardly seeing anyone, you know, I need this for my own sanity as well. Um, so I think, you know, doing these things like having a big get together makes people feel connected. It's also, you know, obviously it's a, it's a financial investment. It's a financial spend, which I think, you know, people realize if we're, we can afford to bring everyone around the world and have these amazing events down in New Orleans that, you know, something's going right and things are going well and people should be rewarded and really feel part of the success and, you know, as well as all that. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's doing those things as well. I think they make a big difference. You don't want your developers turning into gremlins in the basement, just clacking <laughs> away at code all day long. Any other words of wisdom that you have from your experiences, iterating your agency services, taking the right people along with you on that journey and continuing to, to move ahead on, on new things? Any other words of wisdom? Absolutely. Um, most of all, put your trust in the people you trust and actually give the power to make change uh, to those people that you trust um, because it's you can pay lip service and, and, and believe in what they're doing, but if they see a better way or there's other opportunities, really listen and, and allow that to manifest itself because um, you can pretend to trust somebody, but there's only really proof that you do trust them when you give them an opportunity to make a mistake. And that's taking a chance on, on new, check, new tech, new processes, new ideas. You got to give it a shot. Yeah. You got to be ready you to lose. Do. Yeah, you do. Uh, autonomy with accountability, you know, Make, <laughs> right. making sure they've got room to breathe, but there's still some some guidance and making sure that you're not going to, you know, lose money or lose a bunch of time yeah. and opportunity cost on something. Well, I think ultimately you got to lose some in order to win. And I think that's everyone, every owner and every entrepreneur is taking on a, a, a level of risk and it certainly doesn't all go very well. There are going to be losses and there's going to be mistakes and there's going to be things that you cringe looking back on. Now, the reason why I started the advance at the beginning was so that when things like that do happen, you can learn from it and that can change it. So yeah, it's been ready and, and, and okay with losing sometimes if it's for the greater good. Worst thing is making a mistake and repeating it again. That's yeah. where we get problems. Such a good attitude to have, Paul, so that you're not just stuck in analysis paralysis all the time. Because <laughs> that happens a lot where you're like, well, maybe maybe we should pursue this, but you're, you're scared to because you don't want to fail. And I like right. your perspective. Just go for it. Be smart. Um, account for it and probably have a, a realistic cutoff deadline with a goal to right. make sure that you're not going to let something go on forever and just turn into a zombie project. But uh, <laughs> right. don't don't be afraid to pursue interesting things that might just be fad, but might turn into long-term trends too. 100%. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your perspective, your experiences, your ideas, Paul. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And um, yeah, any, any final words? No, thanks a million for having me on, Danielle. It's been great to do it. Thank you again to Paul for coming on and talking about what he's done with his agency, 
to transform service mixes and hire the right people and make sure that people are excited about what's being offered to clients and really moving forward. There's a couple of takeaways that I just want to draw attention back to. The first and most important thing is to avoid commoditization like the plague. So much of marketing implementation services has become commoditized and it's always going to be that way. Anytime you have implementation offered that starts out really unique, it's going to become streamlined and simplified, especially with the world of AI that we're living in. Graphic design is a really good example of this. So graphic design used to be really specialized. You went to art school and you literally designed by hand. Then softwares were developed, but then you had to become technically specialized in using those softwares in order to design. Then you have programs like Canva and AI-based softwares, and you can buy graphic design for super cheap. So it's always this commoditization that happens with marketing implementation services. So you have to keep looking for that next thing. Now, when you're evaluating different options, you want to make sure that you're giving enough time and space to ideas to see if they will work and take root but you have to set a cutoff time. You have to make sure that you're actually testing something with a yes, no cutoff point, and then moving forward from there. Don't be afraid of failure, just account for it. That rounds it out for today's episode of Recalibrigency, where we're hearing stories of the trials and triumphs of agency life from agency owners and marketing leaders. I'm your host, Danielle Photo, and we'll talk to you more soon.